Hi and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about Python 3.9 that got released on October 5. So very recently, just two days ago. And here in the official docs we have a summary of all the new things we have in Python 3.9. So let's go through the most outstanding things and let's go. So here we have new features, a dictionary merge and update operator. So merge will be a pipe symbol and update will be a pipe and an equal uh, sign. And these are basically for dictionaries. So let's see. Here we have a dictionary X, which has this key one, this key two, and Y, which has this key two and this key three. So if we say X merge Y, then we obtain this dictionary key with key one, key two, and key three. But notice that key two is value two from Y. So it is the key from this uh, dictionary here. But if we reverse the the operation, so now Y merge X, then key two is going to be a value two from X. So we always keep the keys if there are well the if the the same key is present in both dictionaries, we uh, stay with the uh, with the uh, key from the right dictionary. Okay, and also we have this this update operator here. Let me see. Here I have this notebook. Uh, which is basically like a sandbox for Python 3.9.0 because I haven't installed this version of Python yet in my machine. Um, I have to investigate more how to do a clean installation of this. I usually use PyEnv for this, but I haven't seen that version yet in PyEnv. And basically PyEnv is for managing multiple versions of Python, but at the time I'm recording this, I have not seen that version yet. So this is an example for merging dictionaries. We have already seen uh, that in the official docs and here in the official docs we don't have an example for updating dictionaries, but it's basically this. We have rings, update with Gandalf lost his ring, which is this dictionary and rings is this thing here. And notice here we have elves and here also we have elves so by updating we are updating this key elves from 3 to 2 this is an in place um, operation so rings is going to be modified and x and with the merge um, x and y is, are going to be the same they're not going to change but they're going to um, they're going to to have this output here so this is going to be a new a new dictionary that you can assign to a variable for example well so we have new string methods to remove prefixes and suffixes we have the remove prefix method which receives as uh, an argumented prefix and remove suffix which receives a uh, suffix as an argument so here in this notebook sorry in this thing here we have for example, this string, you shall not pass. Um, so very fan of Lord of the Rings. And remove suffix pass is going to produce this output, you shall not. And if we remove the prefix you, then we have shall not pass. So I don't know, this can have uh, many use cases right now. I don't know an example, but I think it's very very useful type hinting generics in standard collections so let's read this out loud in type annotations you can now use built-in collection types such as list and dict as generic types instead of importing the corresponding capitalized types um, example list or dict from typing so this is the official uh, module for typing but now we don't need to import these things. We can just say, like in this example, say Gritol, uh, receive these are these parameter names, uh, which is a list of a string. So we don't need now to import this list from the typing. Now it just say it's a list of strings, and that's all. So very very cool. And well, type 
hinting is a very important thing if you are uh, develop developing a real projects I can't live with typing I don't know how people go without type checking or type hinting in this case um, let's see Python 3.9 uses a new parser based on PG instead of LL1 so just to be clear I don't know the specific details of what PG nor LL1 is but it says here that the new parser's performance is roughly comparable to that of the old parser but the PG formalism is more flexible than LL1 when it comes to designing new language features and we'll start using this flexibility in Python 3.10 so in simple words this new parser is um, is going to make the life easier for design new language features and for those of you who don't know what parsing is it's simply um, the process of analyzing a string of symbols uh, in this case analyzing our our syntax our code okay um, what else well we have lots of and lots of technical things that um, they are sure important but I'm not going to cover um, let's see this new module zone info so everyone working with time zones knows that working with time zones is a pain in the ass but now we have the zone info module which brings support for the IANA time and zone database to the standard library so I didn't know what was that but it is the internet sign numbers authority and it says here that the time zone database contains code and data that represent the history of local time for many blah 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 it represents time zones so now we have um, this module here and we can import a zone in this zone info class and we pass this string which is America Los Angeles and it will print the daytime corresponding to this time zone so here in real python.com we have uh, something very important here in this node zone info uses an IANA time zone database residing on your local computer it's possible on Windows in particular so Windows giving always problems that you don't have any such database or that zone info won't be able to locate it if you get an error like the following, then Zone Info hasn't been able to locate the time zone database. So from Zone Info, import Zone Info, um, you pass a string, America Vancouver, and then it throws this error, Zone Info not found error, no time zone found with key America Vancouver. It means that you don't have this database available in your computer, but don't worry, you can simply use Python uh, minus M pip install the DZ data um, I hope that solves your problem so if for example if you want to have the current daytime from Oslo you run this statement here and then for example uh, if you want to convert from this time zone to this time zone you can do it with this as time zone um, as well so it's very very easy to do it with this new zone info uh, module okay the other thing graphlib a new module graphlib was added that contains the graphlib topological sorter class that to offer functionality to perform topological sorting of graphs so for those of you who don't know what topological sort is it is for uh, directed acyclic graph and very very in simple words these are very used for handling tasks so um, go take a look at Airflow which is based 100% um, on this concept of directed acyclic graph so for example if you want to make one task process your data uh, you put that task here in this node then you want to clean your data I don't know you put that or maybe clean your data is the first step then process the data is the second step transform the data is the third step then fourth step can be um, 
I don't know, uh, apply some machine learning model and, and this last node, this five, is independent from this one, so you can uh, do both independently, and this is, I don't know, making some, some graphs. So that's how directed acyclic graph works, and as I told you, Airflow is based um, on this concept of directed acyclic graph. And topological sort is a way to order these vertices according to this definition. So um, you have a vert, you have these n vertices, and you have to order in such a way that if there is there is an edge directed towards vertex vj from vertex vi, then vi comes before pj. For example, consider the graph and the graph given below. A topological sorting of these graphs is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Why? Because y, 1 becomes before 2, 2 becomes before 3, 3 becomes before 4, and 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 is a possible topological sorting. But you can also have 1, 2, 3, 5, and 4, because these are independent, so you can uh, first um, execute this task and then this or the other way around, it doesn't matter this is topological sorting and now we have a module, uh, graphlib to do this topological sort ok, now we have the improved modules AST um, I don't know what this module does, I think it's abstract syntax tree, I don't know async IO, compile all so all of these and I'm going to concentrate only in this one because I found it funny now we have HTTP status code 103 early hints 418 I am a teapot and actually I didn't know what uh, this HTTP status code was so I search it I am a teapot status code MDN and it says here that this is a client error response code that indicates that the server refuses to brew coffee because it is permanently a teapot. A combined coffee teapot that is temporarily out of coffee should instead return 503. And this error is a reference to hypertext coffee pot control protocol defined in April Fool's joke in 1998 and 2014. So <laughs> I really don't know <laughs> what this means. I found it funny, so that's worth mentioning that you have now I am a teapot HTTP status code. Um, what else we have here? Math. We are math as second language, so this should be uh, cool for us. We have now the math that that math. Uh, the greatest common divisor function can handle now multiple arguments so now we can calculate the greatest common divisor of a lot of numbers great now we have this method list common multiple returns the list common multiple of the specified arguments great um, we have the next after return the next floating point value after x towards y and this ULP that returns the value of the least significant bit of a of a float. Okay, what else do we have here? Uh, random. Here we have a new random run bytes method that generates these random bytes. I don't know, it can be useful. And here this thing typing. Um, typing is very very important and it says here that this pep or PEP introduce a typing annotated type to decorate existing types with context specific metadata so I found an, an example here let me see in the index of this thing annotated type hints so basically now we can say uh, in a function that for example if we want to calculate speed we can say the distance is some float and you can say hey this is in in the feet units time is also float it is in the seconds unit so um, if you want to calculate speed this is going to be in miles per hour this is going to return something in miles per hour and that's cool because uh, you are 
you have feet and seconds and you are returning miles per hour but that's something as specific to your program and when you you import this speed uh, function you can have the annotations you have this annotations property that is saying hey distance is going to be in feet time is going to be in seconds and the return type is going to be in miles per hour so you do some conversion and somehow feet over second is going to be miles per hour very very useful and what else we have optimizations and very specific or um, very technical things so yeah I think those are the most outstanding changes we have for Python 3.9 um, so I've heard that some people are throwing hate on this I don't know why can you you can put in the comments why they're throwing hate but I think they are cool um, improvements so developing is about improving things and well that's all for uh, this video I hope you like it and see you in the next one bye bye